Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to talk about Judaism, which is one of the five major religions in the world. Among the five, Judaism is the oldest religion of the Western world, with about 4,000 years of history. Judaism is also unique in the sense that it is confined only to Jews. To put it another way, no people of other race or ethnicity believe in Judaism. The population of Jews nowadays is estimated at 16 million throughout the world. About 40% of them reside in Israel. Another 40% in the United States, with the most of the remainder living in Europe. In spite of the widespread of settlements, Jewish people have a very strong sense of community. Such closeness is largely due to their religion. For Jewish people, Judaism is more than a religious belief. It also refers to a way of life. In their long history, Jewish people have lived a life that is clearly distinguishable from others. They have been united by their religion wherever they live and also have suffered because of their religion. The content of today's video is based on one of my published books, which is entitled Essentials of World History. If you need more detailed information about Judaism, the Jewish people, and the state of Israel, you may want to read this book, which is available on Amazon. Before I move any further, I have to declare that much of my talk about Judaism comes from Jewish traditions. The story of Judaism began in Mesopotamian areas in about 2000 BCE. To give you a perspective about how old Judaism is, Christianity was born around the 1st century CE and Islam was founded around the early 7th century CE. Mesopotamia is well known in history because it is where the world's first civilization emerged. Geographically, Mesopotamia refers to the modern-day Iraq, Syria, and their surrounding areas. At the time, people in Mesopotamia were polytheistic, meaning that they believed in and worshipped numerous different gods. Among these peoples was a group of Hebrews who were led by a man named Abraham. Abraham was the first to reject polytheism and he started preaching monotheism. God was very much impressed by Abraham's preaching. Very soon, God and Abraham sealed a covenant at Mount Sinai which declared that Abraham and his people and their descendants would forever revere and worship him only and obey his laws. God, in turn, would forever watch over and protect them. God also gave Abraham and his people a piece of land known as the Land of Promise. The Hebrews were thus very different from most of the population of their time because they were monotheistic. A new religion thus got underway and would grow to be a major religion in the world. Now, let me briefly talk about their spiritual book, which is known as the Tanakh. For many centuries, the Jewish scriptures had been passed on from generation to generation in oral form. According to most historians, it was around the 7th century BCE that they were written down under King Josiah. 
The Tanakh is divided into three sections: the Torah, meaning law; the Navim, meaning prophets; and the Ketuvim, meaning writings. The word Tanakh is actually an acronym of these three sections. Among the three, the Torah, which is also known as the Five Books of Moses, is the most prominent. It describes the creation of the earth by God, such as this one: "Let there be light," and there is light. The Torah also contains the Ten Commandments, such as this one: "Thou shalt not steal." As I mentioned in my video about Christianity. Christians later on incorporated the entire Tanakh into their Bible. For Christians, the Jewish scriptures were collectively known as the Old Testament, because the New Testament was originally written in Greek and the Old Testament in Hebrew. The Tanakh is often referred to as the Hebrew Bible. When we talk about Judaism, we have to talk about Jewish people. By the way, both Hebrew and Jew refer to the same people, although the word Hebrew is often used to describe Jews in their early history. The word Jew has two meanings: a distinct ethnic community and a religion. It is impossible to separate them. This dual identity is a result of their unique history. According to Jewish traditions, Hebrews settled in the land of promise, which is a piece of land called Canaan, on the eastern shore of the Mediterranean Sea. However, around 1300 BCE, many Hebrews moved to Egypt to escape a famine. In Egypt, they were ill-treated and enslaved. Hundreds of years later, under the leadership of Moses and with God's help, they managed to escape from Egypt and return to Israel. This was the event mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, known as the Exodus. Around the 11th century BCE, Saul became the first king of Israel. By the way, the word Israel is a Hebrew name meaning "God will prevail." Later on, King David conquered Jerusalem and made it his capital. In about 10th century BCE, under King Solomon, the Holy Temple was built in Jerusalem, which became an extremely important symbol of Judaism. Jerusalem thus became a holy place. For all Jewish people, Jewish people are unique also because of the fact that they were forced to exile out of their homeland a few times by foreign conquests. The first conquest and exile occurred in 721 BCE, when the northern kingdom of Israel was conquered and totally destroyed by Assyrians, who were a group of people living in northern Mesopotamian areas. As a result, a large number of Jews were expelled from their homeland. The second exile occurred in about 586 BCE, when the Babylonian Empire invaded Israel. The Holy Temple in Jerusalem was destroyed, and thousands of Jews were exiled to Babylon. By the way, the Holy Temple was re rebuilt around the fourth century BCE. The most significant exile was imposed by the Romans in 135 CE. The Roman conquest fundamentally and permanently changed. Jewish existence. It removed almost all Jews from their homeland. This exile was the beginning of a long history of Jewish diaspora, 
which refers to the life as a minority group within a dominant group in other countries around the world. However, what is unique about the Jewish people is that wherever they were, they were united by their religion and always stuck to their own way of life. They never abandoned their religion. From the Roman times until the 1940s, Jewish people often faced harsh mistreatment largely because of their religion. In Spain, for example, Jews were ordered to leave by the Spanish monarch King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella in the 15th century. The worst massacre happened to them just before and during the Second World War. As many as six million Jews were murdered in what we now call the Holocaust under Nazi Germany. In modern times, the Jewish effort to return to Israel became stronger and stronger, which became known as the Zionist movement. After the First World War, Britain, which was controlling Palestinian areas, encouraged Jewish immigration to Palestine, causing brutal racial clashes in the region between Jewish settlers and the Palestinians. After the Second World War, the British government referred the issue to the United Nations, which, in 1948, sanctioned the establishment of the State of Israel by carving out a piece of land from what British-controlled Palestine against the wishes of Palestinians. A chain of resentments and hatred followed, which has brought a series of wars to the Middle East until nowadays. For an explanation of religious clashes, you may want to check out one of my previous videos in which I explained why it is difficult for different religions to coexist peacefully in one place. I will leave a link down below. Well, that is all that I wanted to talk about today. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.